Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the visitors of our church. It's always good to have visitors in our midst. I want to continue my children's sermon with all of you. Stewardship Sunday. We do it once a week, once a week year. We had to designate one Sunday to be a day when we reflect on whether we are being good stewards, good and faithful stewards, or not. So it's interesting. We, it just happened that this Sunday, the gospel lesson, fell on the gospel of the rich fool. If you're here for the gospel and heard the gospel story, you remember the story. And it's a story that I think is very appropriate for us here in America, for many of us. You have a man who does well. Nothing wrong with what he did. He must have been a very good farmer, a very good businessman. The gospel doesn't say anything about him making his riches in a corrupt way. It simply says he did really well. And when he did well, what did he do? He started to look around at all that he had, and he said, you know, my crops are going incredible. I don't even have enough room to store all my crops. So what am I going to do? And here is the beginning of his foolishness. He says, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to build bigger, bigger barns. Tear down the barns that I have, build bigger barns so that I can store all that I have. And then I'm going to realize, you know what? I have enough to retire early. I have enough to take it easy. I have enough <coughs> to simply sit back and now enjoy the fruit of my labor. In America, what would, what we, what would we say about such a person? We would say, undoubtedly, he's a resounding success. Wow, I wish I had that life. I wish I could retire early. I wish I had enough not to worry about my future. I wish that I could just sit back, take it easy, retire, and enjoy life. Well, what did we say that's a success? How many wouldn't say that was a success? You don't have to raise your hands. But think about it. So why is it that the world will also look at this man with envy and say, he's successful? But God says, you fool. God calls him foolish. Why is that? I mean, this is the challenge of the gospel. When we hear a gospel story like today's story, for all of us, I know it challenges me. Absolutely, it challenges me to ask me, wow, what am I doing with all that I have? What the world would say is success, the epitome of success, early retirement. You have enough to take care of. God is saying you're a fool. Foolishness. And why is it? For one reason. Not because the man was rich. Not because he made a lot. No. Different people have different talents, different opportunities. They can do different things. To become rich and have much, there's nothing wrong with that. But why does God allow us to become rich? I was just in Uganda a couple weeks ago. And let me tell you, for anyone here who doesn't think you're rich, I guarantee you the Ugandans will look at you and say, you're extremely rich. I wish I had your money. So I'm not talking about the 1% or the half a percent in our society. This gospel lesson is for all of us because all of us are rich in different ways. And the big question today on Stewardship Sunday and on this gospel reading is, How do we use our riches? How do we use the blessings that God has given us? What do we use them for? Do we use them to build bigger barns, bigger homes, nicer cars, more clothes, so that we have to have bigger closets to fill all our clothes in? Is that what we do? Or do we reflect and say, God has blessed me richly. What does he want me to do with those blessings? How can I help others who don't have the blessings I have? How can I help God's church to promote 
this good news and proclaim it throughout this country, throughout this world. That's what it means to be rich in the eyes of God. Think about that gospel story. Do we want to be called a fool for how we take care of what God has given us? Or do we want to hear the words when Jesus says, Come, my good and faithful servant. That's the challenge that we have. And I know when we have our stewardship Sunday every year, sometimes people don't like when the church talks about giving. And yet, remember, in Jesus' stories, throughout the gospel, Christ talks more about money and treasure than he does about prayer, fasting, and other spiritual disciplines. Because he understood giving, what we do with our possessions is a spiritual discipline. What we do with our possessions is a spiritual discipline. And so, he said, where our treasure is, our heart will be. Is our treasure with our things, with our money, with what we possess, or is our treasure with God, with the saints, with the church, with the good news that we want to play? So let's think about that and be honest in ourselves. Rest with yourself. Am I being generous? The little story with the children was about the Old Testament. Where they, in the Old Testament, God said to the Israelites, whenever you farm or whatever you do, the first 10%, the first 10%, before you do anything else, offer it back to God in the temple. That's a challenge. How many of us do that? And why don't we? <coughs> you know, think about that. That's the Old Testament teaching. When Jesus came along, Jesus said, well, yeah, you do the time. Do what the Old Testament taught. But I'm going to tell you something more. Everything you have isn't yours. Even your life is not your own. <coughs> Our lives are God's. And it's a gift from God. And one day, God is going to say, Steve, Marion, Titi, Nicoletta, Trish, he's going to say, Barbara, Bill, there's some funny. He's going to say, I've given you all that you have in life. What have you done with it? Where have you given back? What have you given back? Have you been a good and faithful steward? Or have you been a fool? like the rich man in the gospel. It's a challenging gospel, but that's why we come to church. We come to church not only to be comforted, not only to be filled with the Spirit, but also come to church to be challenged so that we can stay on that straight and narrow path. So let's all think about that today. All of you in your bulletins received a stewardship form. And I ask all of you, before you leave today, you can either do it now, you can do it in the public fellowship, leave it in the church office, but try to fill out the form and see. This is just, there's no, this isn't a commitment, it's a commitment, but no one's going to follow up and hold you, put your feet in the fire and say, do you fulfill your commitment? I mean, we would like you to fulfill your commitment. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And whatever you give, of your time, your talents, and your church. Please fill this out, reflect on it. You're going to take it home and think about it. You're going to it, but give it back to the church and make a commitment. Try to reflect. What have I done last year? And how has God blessed me this year? And am I, am I going to do the same? Have I done the same for the last 10 years? Every year we do the same? That's when the church was on the due system, saying so you give something, you give the same every year, year after year. We don't have a due system. We have a scripture system that says you can give whatever you want. Give. But I challenge you to look at how you've been blessed. And then to give of your time, your talents, and your treasure to glorify God. To be that good and faithful steward. We're going to have after church a general assembly, a full general assembly in place here we meet. And in the general assembly, we're going to have to pass our budget for 2019.
our budget for 2019 is around, for our church, around $250,000. Our stewardship pledge last year, what we're hoping for next year, is going to be 121,000. So about 46% of our budget is covered by our stewardship. Truth be told, how many of you in your household run a budget where you only put 46% of what you're going to spend? None of you, right? And how many of you then, if you don't make up the then make that up, will say, well, let me have a little festival to try to make up the money. Let me ask my neighbors to pay for what we in the church do. None of us will do that in our personal funds. But the church, somehow we think that's normal. But what should be normal in the church is we have a budget of $250,000. We have stewardship of $250,000 to cover our budget. And then we have a festival, and we say, all the proceeds of the festival, we'll give the charity to support Webster and other charities. That would be a goal that we should all embrace. But for right now, we're at the goal, of, we're at the present, where we have a budget of 250000 and we have stewardship, which makes up 46% of that. Let's try to increase that for the glory of God. God bless us all. And during this week of Thanksgiving, let us really pause to thank God, reflect and thank God for the countless blessings that we have. Give glory to God and to say, Lord, help me to give back, to share the blessings I have with the world around us, to make this world a better place.